I'm going to take this piece of terrain I made in my last video and rebuild it as a 3D model in Blender, so I can 3D print it. There are a lot of ways we can do this, including 3D scanning, but we're going to model this in the laziest way possible. And to do that, we're going to start by making a single brick. Before you do anything else though, go to the scene properties and change units to millimeters. It makes it much easier to work. If you want to use a different unit, make sure to adjust the dimensions I give here. The model is a ring, so let's define the outer diameter. Add a circle with 32 subdivisions and set the radius to 80 millimeters. Now we can tap into edit mode and add a second circle with a 60 mm diameter. This gives us the inner diameter. We will only need a single brick, so let's delete all the segments we don't need. When we're done to the last two, we can select them and press F to create a polygon. Next, we're going to replicate this with an array modifier. This way we're going to have 32 bricks, but we're only going to need to worry about one. Any changes we make to this will be replicated. Set the count to 32, switch off relative offset and switch on object offset. We will use this to tell Blender how far each brick should rotate from the previous one. We will need an object to define this, so let's add an empty for this. This is just an object with no volume, so it won't interfere with anything else. Once we have the empty, we can select it in the object offset box. Now we can select the empty in the outliner and give it a rotation. We don't need to calculate this beforehand. A full circle is 360 degrees and we want to fit 32 segments. We can just type 360 slash 32. Bam! If you wanted to, you could set this to any angle to get different results, but we don't need that right now. We have a ring, but it's still flat. To fix that, let's go into edit mode and hide the array modifier for now. You can do that by hitting that little icon that looks like a monitor. Make sure the polygon is selected and press E for extrusion, then 10 to make it 10 mil thick. Now we have a box. We won't need the faces that will be butting up against each other, so let's just delete them. Next we'll want to add some bevels, so we'll need to add some more geometry. Press Ctrl R or Command R for the loop cut tool, type 10 and then click the box. This will slice it into 11 identical slices. We just did that to make sure that the slices on the end are the same size, but we don't need all these. Press 1 to jump to point editing, then select all the points from the third one to the tenth. Make sure you select the tenth last. We can then press M for merge and select at last. This will clean up our geometry for us. Repeat this on a free side. When you're ready, select all the open edges on one side, press S for scale and type 0.9. This is not a measurement, it's a relative value, like saying you want this 10% smaller. Unhide the array modifier and check out the way it looks. You can keep doing further adjustments here, and they all get replicated on all the stones in the array. Before we move on to the next step, let's turn Merge on in the array modifier. Right now all the bricks are just butted against each other, which can cause some problems later. So check Merge and dial the distance down to 1mm. Now the array will act like one solid object. Next up, we will want to make this look a bit more stony and worn. We're going to do that with a displacement map soon, but there are two things we must do first to prepare for that. First, we'll need a subdivision modifier. Displacement maps need a lot of geometry to work with, but the first thing you will notice when we add the subdivision is that it looks like it's made of marshmallows now. No worries. Jump into edit mode and select all the edges except the open ones. Using the bevel tool, add a small bevel to the edges. It doesn't have to be too huge. Now when we unhide the subdivision surface again, it will retain its shape better.
Next, we're going to have to prepare some UV coordinates. The best way I've had this explained to me was to imagine that the model is a chocolate bear, and the texture is the picture printed on the wrapping. UV coordinates are what tell Blender how to wrap it, so it doesn't look like some kind of Lovecraftian horror. Let's hop over to the UV mapping tab and add a new color grid. This makes it a lot easier to identify distortions. In this case, we don't need to be 100% free of distortions as the texture will hide that. We just want to make sure that it's not too janky. Now we're going to add the material to the model and assign the color grid as our texture. This will be horribly distorted, but we can fix that in a second. Go into Edit Mode, select all the edges across the brick and select Mark Scene from the Edge menu. Now with Z, everything and click Unwrap from the UV menu, Blender will have a much easier time of holding it. There's still some distortion as the corner pieces are preventing it from being unwrapped cleanly. Think of it as if it were a paper model. The cuts we're making are the ones we need if we want to be able to make it flat again. Once we're done, it should be out cleaner. There's still some distortion when we enable the subdivisions again, but for this model we can live with it. Now it's time to make it look stony. Add a displace modifier. Don't worry, this always looks weird with the, the defaults. Click new and load in your new texture image. I'm just using some uh, random clouds I generated in GIMP. Back in the modifiers panel, turn the strength down to 0.002 and set the coordinates to UV. You should now have a nice bumpy texture. We do have a problem with the displacement as it created some gaps in the seams. To work around that, I'm going to restrict the displacement to the larger faces only, using a vertex group. Create a vertex group and assign it to the displacement modifier. Then select the main faces and assign them to the vertex map. And there you go. Stone knitting done with no gaps. I skipped over making the inner rings because the process is exactly the same as we did for the stone ring, just without the displacement modifier. I have also created a seam all the way around the top of the face of the smaller brick. Since we want to be able to set the cliff on the face of each brick individually, we're going to apply the area modifier. Next, we're loading in our image texture with the glyphs and setting it in a new material so we can see what we're doing. We're only interested in the top faces, so we just need to scale them up a bit and position them over the glyphs. This takes a while, but it isn't complicated. Then it's just a question of adding a displacement modifier with the same image and playing around with the strength and midpoint setting. And you have a, yourself a portal thingy in 3D.
There's still a fair bit of tweaking I need to do before I release this STL, but if you want to see more Blender videos, here is a playlist for you. If you are more interested in manual crafting, here's another one you might like. Bye!